Hello and welcome to Newsbreak. I'm your host, Nick Steffens. Coming up, Carter Amos had a career game against Fort Madison, but first, today's top stories. The Mount Pleasant Community School District Board convened a special meeting on Monday to explore the potential acquisition of buildings in the central campus section of the former Iowa Wesleyan University property. The district has been considering the establishment of grade alike elementary schools and aims to eventually create an all grades elementary institution. Following the closure of Iowa Wesleyan, the board began assessing the feasibility of utilizing the available buildings for this purpose. At a recent session, they met with Carl Nelson Construction to discuss the prospective project. Preliminary discussions indicated an estimated renovation cost ranging from $26 to $31 million, which is lower than the estimate for constructing a new building. However, the provided assessment does not cover additional expenses, such as asbestos abatement, equipment replacement, exterior improvements, or playground facilities. The board also deliberated on upkeep costs for unused buildings. If the purchase proceeds, the design phase is anticipated to take around nine months, with construction lasting approximately 18 months. A committee composed of residents, officials, and business leaders in Washington is nearing completion of a proposed ordinance governing vacant and partially vacant buildings in the city's downtown district. The new municipal code, set to take effect in October, if approved, would require owners of unused buildings to register them with the city and pay an annual fee determined by elected officials. The code would also establish maintenance standards and periodic on-site evaluations to ensure compliance with fire, building, and housing safety codes. The committee's discussion focused on defining vacancy, and the agreed-upon definition includes building unoccupied for one year or with at least 50% vacancy above the basement level. The proposed rules aim to address neglected buildings, promote safety, and preserve the historic downtown area. The committee plans to conduct one final review before recommending the rules to the city council. A widespread drought is significantly impacting crop production in Iowa, with experts and farmers reporting the adverse effects. The USDA's Crop Progress and Conditions Report for the week, ending June 25th, revealed that over two-thirds of fields experienced short or very short moisture conditions in both topsoil and subsoil. Less than a third of hay conditions were rated as good to excellent, while corn and soy ratings dropped from 80% last year to 56 and 48 respectfully. Sulting temperatures have exacerbated this situation, with some areas experiencing severe or extreme drought conditions. The lack of rainfall has led to reduced yield potential for corn and soybeans. Late season showers may provide some relief, but the early summer conditions have already capped the crop's potential. The dry conditions have also impacted herbicide usage and allowed hardier weeds to thrive. The spotty nature of rainfall has caused disparities between fields. Farmers are reliant on timely rain for the crops to flourish, and the lack of precipitation is raising concerns about yields. Producers using cover crops have experienced mixed results, with some benefiting from moisture retention and soil protection, while others with aggressive cover cropping face more significant challenges. The drought has also affected cattle pastures, forcing farmers to tap into water food supplies earlier and haul feed and water to sustain livestock. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll take a look at the weather and sports. Since 1905, Kelowna Cooperative Technology Company has helped our community stay connected with the latest advancements in clear, dependable telecommunications services. KCTC provides rural Iowans with access to high-speed fiber internet, as well as phone, television, computer repair, and cybersecurity solutions. We're also proud supporters of local organizations and area schools within the community. KCTC, keeping Kelowna connected. At the Capper Auto Group, we put our customers' needs first and understand that everyone is as different as the vehicle they select. We offer new Ford, Chevrolet, Buick, GMC, Jeep, Chrysler, Dodge, and Ram vehicles in a friendly environment that puts you in the driver's seat. When it comes to service, we maintain factory-trained technicians and competitive pricing. The Capper Auto Group still believes that service after the sale provides the best customer experience. Come see the Capper experience for yourself. When you aspire to be a dancer, you are both an artist and an athlete. Your strength combines with beauty and grace seamlessly. Your efforts result in enhanced coordination, the ability to cooperate and compromise with others, and the confidence to perform in front of an audience. Not to mention the fun you will have and the lifelong friendships you will develop. We are enrolling now for fall classes and we would love to see you shine like the star that you are. 
Join us for Dance and Tumbling at Stairway to the Stars. Please visit our website for online registration. Hospice isn't a place, it's a type of care that focuses on living. Servicing a seven county area, the Hospice of Washington County staff of nurses, social work, hospice aides, spiritual and grief support, volunteers, music and massage therapists are able to provide free end of life care where the patient lives. We write wills, give consent for organ donation, but rarely is there a plan for what we would want the final phase of our lives. At Hospice of Washington County, we encourage our patients to be in charge of their health care decisions while maintaining quality of life. You know, it's not a question of what all you have and so on with your life. It's who is in your life and how much you care for them and how much they care for you. And Tammy definitely cares. Hello and welcome back to Newsbreak. I'm your host, Nick Steffens. Coming up, your five-day forecast, but first, obituaries. Marvin R. Lambert of Winfield passed away on June 23rd at the age of 97. A funeral service will be held at 2 p.m. June 28th at Winfield First Presbyterian Church. Snyder and Hollenball Funeral Service is in charge of the arrangements. Ruth and Harrison of Marion passed away on June 25th at the age of 88. A private family service will be held at a later date. Murdoch Funeral Home is in charge of the arrangements. Marty Allen Johnson of Washington passed away on June 27th at the age of 65. A private graveside service will be held at a later date. The Beatty Peterson Funeral Home is in charge of the arrangements. John L. Schmidt of Quincy, Illinois passed away on June 26th at the age of 92. A service will be held at 10.30 a.m. June 30th at the Quincy Memorial Park Mausole- Mausoleum. Hanson Spear Funeral Home is in charge of the arrangements. That was obituaries. It is now time for your five-day forecast. We've had some nasty weather today with a high of 90 and strong storms. Tomorrow, there's a chance of more thunderstorms throughout the morning with a high of 86. Temperatures will plummet to 79 degrees on Saturday, and there's a chance for more thunderstorms throughout the day. The storms will stick around through Sunday, and the high will be 80. Finally, on Monday, it'll be 86 and mostly sunny. We're going to take another quick break, and when we come back, we'll take a look at sports. Federation Bank is a locally owned bank providing award-winning customer service. We believe that we are more than just a federation of banks, but a federation of communities serving Brighton, Richland, Wellman, and Washington, Iowa. Federation Bank's highly skilled staff is here to make sure you are able to accomplish your personal and professional goals, whatever they may be. Federation Bank, your family bank. Family owned and operated by Andy and Sarah Ross, Ross Auto has been your vehicle repair and maintenance headquarters since 1935. We specialize in all makes of cars and light duty trucks. With our variety of available services, let us help you keep rolling and your vehicle operating efficiently. Services include general auto repair, alignments, brakes, fuel injection, and more. Schedule your appointment today at 319-653-5656. That's 319-653-5656 been in healthcare for many years. I know that Tammy's that person who wants to help others and take care of us. She knows the healthcare business and wants to take care of others. Welcome back to Newsbreak. I'm your host, Nick Steffens. It is now time for sports. In Fort Madison, Mount Pleasant senior Carter Amos delivered a standout performance, hitting two consecutive home runs in a game against Fort Madison. Amos's home runs came in the fifth and sixth innings, helping the Panthers extend their lead and secure a 19-11 victory. He finished the game with four hits in nine RBIs, significantly surpassing the previous season total of nine RBIs. Other notable contributors for the Panthers include Zarek Vanghaus, who had two RBIs, and Payson Coleman, who knocked in two runs. Starting pitcher Jake Ensminger scored three runs and had one RBI. In the second game, Mount Pleasant initially held a 2-1 lead, but fell behind after a seven-run ending by Fort Madison. Despite a late rally by the Panthers, they ultimately lost 8-5. Ensminger's sacrifice fly was the only RBI for Mount Pleasant in the second game. 
With these results, the Panthers' overall record stands at 11-11 with a conference record of 7-7. Seven seven. They'll conclude their Southeast Conference schedule with a home game against Fort Madison today. That is the news for Southeast Iowa. I've been your host, Nick Steffens. This has been your news break, and I will see you next time.